Welcome to Test Fit Now. I'm Jack O'Neill. I'm joined by Laura Schwartz and Stan Wolf, and I'm going to introduce them in just a second. We're so excited to talk to you today. The three of us work with teams every week strategizing on how they're going to use Test Fit to change their business and make a revenue impact. I know from my experience, industry professionals are really curious, you know, beyond the features, what are people actually doing with Test Fit? And so today I've brought with me Laura Schwartz. Laura is a customer success manager at Test Fit. Laura leads the implementation team, which is tech speak for she helps get set up, test fit set up to run for your business. She's got 15 years of industry experience, is a registered architect with a master's in real estate. Laura's got ex experience on the design, development, and city side for multiple firms, a national REIT, and was a senior city planner for the city of Austin. Thanks for being here, Laura. Also joined by Stan Wolf. Stan's got about 10 years of experience on the design side and three years of experience on the development side, working in Ohio and California. Stan was first a customer of TestFit, and at his last development job, ran projects using the software before coming to work on the dark side with us. Our customers provide a lot of great feedback on how to make the tool more powerful, and Stan's feedback was so valuable, we had to bring them on board to help you make TestFit powerful for you. I often talk about people that become investors in TestFit or customers first. Stan, you're about as personally invested as possible. Let's dive in and talk about how teams put those features to work. I'd love to start with you, Stan. Tell us about when you got TestFit and what you did with it. Thanks a lot, Jack. It's great to be here with you and Laura today. It's an exciting time to be in the design and development space. TestFit has come a long way since I first saw it in 2018. I was working at an architecture firm and the program itself just had Texas Donuts and Wraps at the time. I showed it to the principal thinking it was a pretty cool technology, had some advantages to it, but I got a less than enthusiastic reaction from him. He mentioned that he thought this type of technology could take our jobs, and I knew he was totally missing the point. I was a little frustrated because I had never seen a technology in the negative light that he saw. I had always seen it as a better tool to remove some of the mundane and manual work that us design professionals were doing and really concentrate on the design and not so much, spend so much time on recounting units and stalls. So later on, when I joined a developer, I showed it to my VP and it was a quick ROI calculation. We realized we could save 10X on our architectural fees for the year. So we got TestFit to regain some of the control on many of those first looks while saving time and costs on design fees at the same time. We looked at several sites with wraps and podiums with different unit layouts to see what might work best for those scenarios. And it really worked like a charm. Well, I see we've got some other users here on the call. Thanks for being here, Thomas. Uh, Laura, can you describe for us what's the typical feasibility process look like today? Sure. Well, thanks for having me here today. Um, so the traditional feasibility process involves the collaboration between many stakeholders. So we've got the developer, the architect, the consultant, and then also the use of multiple software applications uh, to explore if the desired project or deal will work on a unique site. Developers will have a pro forma and a program criteria, and then they'll engage a uh, architect to apply this criteria to a given site. Architects will then reference and analyze the, the site data for cursory topography, building, zoning code constraints, and integrate the research into the development of 2D and or 3D massing plans and models based around this deal criteria. And to create these models, they'll utilize software such as AutoCAD, Revit, or SketchUp. Uh, once these plans and models are in place, they need to be quantified. So say we're working on a student housing apartment project, uh, we need to count everything from units and beds down to parking spaces. So we've got the modeling done, we've got the counting done. Uh, now these numbers that need to be manually entered into a database or an Excel spreadsheet. So what's key here is manual entry. And what that means is there's definitely an opportunity for mistakes. And uh, I don't know one architect who's not a perfectionist. So what that means is counting once, rechecking, maybe checking again. So a lot of time invested in this process. And the next step, we've got graphic representation. So taking that 3D plan uh, and model and the data uh, and combining that in a presentation package. So enlisting yet another application. So it might be Photoshop, InDesign, uh, both, or, or maybe Bluebeam, but uh, the architect will create this presentation package 
which might have several uh, scenarios or options, and then present it to the developer. So at this stage, uh, the developer is looking at, at the, the package and looking at criteria like efficiency percentages, unit counts, unit mixes. Does that unit mix make sense for the market to absorb? Uh, is, is this proposal maximizing the potential of the site? Uh, and does it make financial sense? Does it meet the desired hurdle rate? Is it within the risk to tolerance for development spread? So at this point, uh, it's uh, we're about three to four, maybe even five software applications deep. And the price, uh, this process will likely need to be repeated several times, which might take several days or even weeks. Uh, so this traditional approach eats up a lot of time, leaves plenty of room for errors, and then limits the creativity and flexibility of the team because there's ultimately only so much time in a day and only so many options that can be presented. Uh, so imagine if there were a better way to streamline this process, minimize errors, and explore more options without all of this manual front work, essentially. And there is a way. Sure, sure, yeah. The old way, a lot of steps, a lot of programs, it just takes days to get through. How does that change with TestFit? Why would an architect want to change it with TestFit? Absolutely, well, TestFit empowers the architect to analyze more options or iterations faster. It provides solutions that meet the parameters set by the site constraints and also the deal requirements. So we've got parcel, zoning, topo, flood data, satellite imagery, deal parameters, and, and many more parameters uh, that are all applied to this uh, solutions, multiple solutions in real time. And then if you change a parameter, the solution changes. So it adjusts in real time. So solutions hey, Jack, provided. Can you check the next slide? Because I think we've got some visuals of, of some Pardon of that me. stuff. Yeah. Oh, or this is... Uh, Analog example of, of uh, going from SketchUp to Excel, and now now we're in TestFit. So uh, solutions provided are not merely the options that have historically worked, uh, and they're not just from the few options that the architect had time to create, but ra rather uh, utilizing TestFit allows the architect to shortlist the best solutions by vetting multiple options, maybe potentially from tens of thousands of options, that meet the given uh, parameters of the site, drawing on their own experience and their expertise and evaluating those solutions to share their preferred scenarios with the developer. And then further, architects can conduct their feasibility studies and collaborate with, developer, with the developers in one ecosystem. So really crushing that tech stack that we just went through and reducing the amount of software applications as well as increasing accuracy and providing a platform for real-time deal communication. So enhanced collaboration as a team. No. And Stan, from a developer perspective, how does this all help us make better buildings? Yeah, I mean, as a developer, you could always have a lot of funding sources to juggle and be accountable for. And you wanna make sure that you're taking the right amount of time to maximize the use of the site with various constraints. And the only real way to be confident in your approach is by eliminating a few of those alternatives and getting to the best one on that site. I talk to architects that are doing a lot more work with their guts than you might expect. How does TestFit power up a developer <clears throat> with a honed intuition and maybe 20 years of experience? Yeah, traditionally, I've talked to hundreds of different developers in my time in TestFit. And a lot of the first looks are with spreadsheet formulas and sometimes favors or getting in the queue with your favorite architect to get that site plan and some massing. Um, but it's not very efficient and we're not able to go through as many iterations as you need to to get to the good deal before the next person does. So with TestFit, it's one of those levers that you can pull to get there faster. Uh, TestFit really puts people in the driver's seat, allows them to test drive the spreadsheet in real time as it were. And this goes to the uh, Iron Man slide that we have coming up. Yeah, so the black box versus the co-pilot AI. And basically, a lot of people early on in this AI craze were scared of AI because they are thinking about it as this entity that you just let go and it starts re wreaking havoc or it does things that you don't want it to necessarily. But we see TestFit as this co-pilot AI. And our best analogy is Iron Man, where it's an amazing suit. It can do lots of things, lots of technology involved, but it's only as good as the driver. So if you've got somebody in there 
junior designer, a couple of years, they might be able to make something look interesting in test fit, but it won't have the numbers that you need. It won't have the right massing, the right quantities. So anybody with a few user experience that has the industry knowledge can really make some really interesting and effective designs and test fit. But really the proof is in the demo. So I think it would be best to take a look at a site, one that was that Laura looked at in SketchUp earlier, where she did Excel and SketchUp and took a whole day and see what we can do in TestFit and see how long that will take. I love it. Let's go ahead and let you pull up TestFit. I see we've got some questions coming in here. We'll have some okay. time for a Q&A at the end, I think. So you can also use the question and answer functionality beyond the chat to get some of these questions in the queue. I see a couple of them coming through. I'll try to hang on to them, but feel free to use that Q&A feature. We're going to show you the platform in action, and then we'll get to those questions there at the end. Yeah, TestFit's really simple interface. We've done a lot of work in the past couple of years to make the UI even better. And we've picked a site that we're going to add some housing to, and you can go look at it a couple of different mapping options. You have lots of different layering options to look at parcel information, zoning, Esri, layers. So we partner with a lot of great uh, companies. Zonomics is one. Esri, we bring in their information, Mapbox, and Regrid. So we have a lot of contextual information we can work with. If we're going to go ahead and design a site in here, I can go ahead, define by parcels. You see that it automatically picks that site for us to work with. I'm going to go ahead and since I know that a lot of sites are defined by how much parking you can get, I'm gonna start with parking on this site first off. And I know there's already elements on this site to deal with, so I'm gonna go ahead, turn my site plan down a little bit so I can see what those elements are and really define where I want that parking to start off with. So when I come over to the parking, I'll go ahead and change how I'm defining that parking. Instead of filling the whole site, I'll just fill out a particular area that I want that parking in. I'm gonna to toggle so I get some 90 degree increments in here. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Let's see, and now we've got a parking space. I'll go ahead and turn my site plan up a little bit more and we can go ahead and pull and push this and see how this affects how much parking we can actually get on the site. I also wanna go ahead and change the layout because I think we'd get more efficient. Perfect, so I've gone ahead, made a few of those changes. I'm gonna go like click on the surface parking to get that adjusted a little bit more. Great, how much parking do we have? 132. So I know I wanna have about four stories. I wanna have at least hundred units on here. So I can go ahead, bring in one of those configurators for the units themselves and draw that region that I wanna go ahead and do in. So I'll add that region. I'll say, I think the building is gonna go about right here. But what's great about TestFit is you can always come back and change these parameters later. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna say it's unparked because we already have a building there. And now it's uh, popping in a building for me. It's looking at the setbacks. It's looking at the parameters I want. And as I adjust the massing, you see the units automatically changing. I can also go into my development tab and you can see as I adjust the building itself and any other elements of the building, all of the costs will automatically update in real time. And that's what puts TestFit uh, separate from a lot of our competitors is that we connect all three really quickly and you have a lot of control over how you wanna put this together. One of the last things I'll do, I know there's a particular type of unit and size that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that unit database. You can store tens of uh, unit databases here if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and look for my webinar one. It's at the bottom, perfect. Now I've changed it out. We've got at least a hundred units. I'm gonna go back to my parking because I wanna adjust how much parking I have in there. You see that we need to manipulate the site a bit more because we're not getting the parking that I want exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can change that. And I went ahead and made the adjustment. I can also see that I can get more if I change that. Perfect. Now I've got 111 units. I've got 112 parking. And not only do I have the quantities, but I have the massing in 3D. I can take a look around. I can create renderings from this, and I can also go into schemes and continue the evaluation, seeing different forms on the same site, bring in my stakeholders and evaluate this even further. I'm gonna stop the share right now because I'm gonna switch over to one of our newer services, uh, TestFit Web Services. So if I go and I'm bringing up our website right now, I'm signing in, I'm gonna quickly 
switch over to that share and let it load for a second. There we go. I'll Just go while you're doing share. that, we had a uh, we had a question about zoning, <laughs> and you're able to okay. both input your own zoning profile and pull zoning from the city through our zoning provider, Zonomics. Correct. Yes, that that is a whole another five ten minute spiel on its own, but it's <laughs> it's really powerful because we've been asked. I don't know, at least the last three years, you know, this is great, but we need zoning information and Zonomics is a great partner to work with and they're continuously updating their information. So if you don't see all of the information you need now, I'm sure it'll be coming down the road in the future as they build up their platform. But this is a, a quick glimpse at our TestFit web services, the pipeline, where internally in TestFit, we have several different types of deals. You can say the status of the deals, you can go ahead and actually click on any of these deals and share any of these deals as well with stakeholders outside of your company that you wanna go ahead and discuss these different parameters that you set up in TestFit. And they have full functionality of changing the visuals, but they're not editing this. So you're assured that all your information will stay the way you created it in TestFit. Yeah. So yeah, how, how long did that take Jack? Uh, to go through a couple of designs and share a couple more models. Yeah, and, and I think the the speed is, is what really powers the ability to iterate, right, Laura? Right, I mean, that was within uh, seconds, but minutes, but doing that SketchUp model and, and Excel, that took, you know, days, so. You know, beyond the, the, the features that we've been going through here, I always like to hear customer stories uh, Laura, before we get to you, Stan, I think you've got a customer story you wanted to talk about. Um, let's see, that is actually coming after Laura's story because we have a video that I still need to get to you. So if, if Laura can talk about, um, her situation. I was just going to pull this video up. I've got it right here. Oh, okay. If you have it already. Cool. Yep. Glad you do. Hey, hey, Daniel, can I jump in real quick? Because what you said is super important, and it just made me think of something. So Prologis is invested in a company called TestFit. It helps us with site selection to maximize the site for our development. And that's a great example. And Vincent, you're, you're like trying to say, guys, give me a real example. This is a real example. It, you know, but by using this product, we have 40 folks on our development team across basically 19 countries that are using this. And we, we've seen we've increased um, coverage by 8% and we've saved, um, obviously you're saving the initial architectural input. Um, and I think it shaved five days off of our analysis and that's using basically the, the AI that comes through TestFit. I won't go into all about TestFit, but that's a real life example of like what Daniel said, everybody's looking at documents, you're grabbing all, you know, there's a whole bunch of people sitting around the, you know, different computers. Yeah. And so that's a real life, like, I don't want to call it a no-brainer, but it's it's transformational on how we look at it. Yeah, I mean, we've been very fortunate to be able to work with Prologis over the past couple of years, and it's been very eye-opening to see how they work, and they've been helping us improve a lot. And, you know, it was great to see how much they're getting out. They're increasing their coverage by 8%, saving five days off their analysis. That's a big revenue impact. That's really ROI that every CFO can really care about and want to see. Yeah. And when I talk to CFOs during the evaluation process, that's exactly what they're hoping for. Real revenue growth, sure speed wins, depth of study wins, but leveraging that capability to create an efficiency boost, not only levels up process, but it, it creates a real revenue impact. Uh, Laura, thinking outside of the, the Prologis example and industrial, uh, a customer story that you brought to my attention related to residential, I thought was very interesting. Sure, sure. So uh, as a customer success manager, I love uh, talking about customer success stories, obviously. And uh, so this particular uh, customer is Resia. Resia is a vertically integrated real estate company uh, that develops, builds, and manages multifamily uh, rental communities across the country. And they were an early adopter of TestFit and an influential customer. So they really uh, helped us ramp up our capabilities in multifamily and, and high density. 
So their story uh, begins with their land acquisition team. Uh, so their team was spending time sending back CAD files uh, to the architect and back and forth, even just to change a minor modification like a parking space. And this whole process would take maybe a week, sometimes two, and that's just to get uh, one site study done, let alone multiple options and multiple sites. So utilizing TestFit, the team was able to reduce the amount of time spent on uh, getting underwriting done from two weeks to get this, two hours. So two hours uh, while analyzing not just one uh, site study, but six to 12 scenarios all at once. So very powerful. Yeah. What does it mean to go from two weeks to two hours in a study? Sure. So uh, for an architect, it, it might mean getting evenings and weekends back, but uh, it also means uh, hours reduced in feasibility studies, which are often conducted uh, for reduced fees or even if they're built at all, um, mean not just time and money savings, but increased responsiveness uh, to the client, which will lead to building stronger uh, collaborative relationships and ultimately winning more projects. And then further, it means more time dedicated to deals that will be fully realized and built uh, to the design process and time to design research, which will ultimately lead uh, to creating and producing better architecture. Yeah, and, and for the developer, I mean, I was able to get a few more holes in on the weekends for golf, so that's always great. But in the end of the day, we're spending less time on bad deals, putting more resources into our opportunities that can pencil, and that's what's really important. We look at more deals, which makes it more possible for us to find uh, deals to put it into our pipeline going down in the future, because we're always looking a couple of years down the road. I told Stan if we got him to come that I would make this uh, Marvel heavy and to, to bring back my Marvel analogy, I'll, I'll level it up with a quote from the CTO of Accenture. AI isn't about making artificial superhumans. What about using technology to give humans superpowers? And for me, this is really what TestFit is all about. You guys are the Iron Man. Uh, we've got the suit. And Laura is the one who helps you learn how to put it on, put it to action, create a competitive edge using that two weeks down to two hour speed. We've got some great questions in the chat, and I'm really excited to get to uh, get to some of those questions. One of the first questions that I saw that, that kind of popped out at me was asking about, is there a way with TestFit for a user to provide an outcome? The anonymous attendee says, can you enter numbers, parking counts, square footage, number of units, and have TestFit generate options instead of drawing and creating those constraints yourself? So I'll jump in there. So absolutely, you can take uh, input parameters uh, for the different solves. So the, the user can control uh, different, um, uh, I guess, the, the size of the region of the building, uh, ratio of the unit mix, if it's a multifamily. And then TestFit, this uh, algorithm wants to solve to be most efficient. So it will try to place as many units within that defined area, um, but the user controls those parameters. Now, Stan, I'm thinking towards the future. I'm thinking about space technology, is, is there going to be a world in which the user says, I've got a site, I want to put 80 townhomes on it, TestFit, you show me the constraints. Yeah, TestFit really was born with the need for automation. So we do have some tools that let you manually get there and make some choices because you, you need to do that when you're fine tuning some stuff for usability. But we want to get you to that starting point as quickly as possible. So TestFit is always developing. We've come out with fixes and actual updates every few weeks. And so in the future, we are big on creating more automation and moving towards that direction on where you can implement your needs and then TestFit will generate things from those needs. So you're telling me that we're seeing somewhere on the horizon, the ability for a developer to just tell TestFit what it wants and TestFit could potentially generate that outcome for them? I, I can't say too much right now, but we have some very great things coming around the corner. So just keep a lookout. Pretty, pretty exciting. We've got a, a detailed question here from Rad Lazic at Autodesk. How are the options varied? Are the key objects manipulated by user or can they be controlled incrementally, incrementally modified 
by results of generative design optimizations. There, a number of criteria parameters are defined by a range of values and a series of layouts are produced with evaluative metrics KPIs. So I'll, I'll try and tackle this one as simply as I can. So right now, TestFit is working towards the parameters that are associated with presets. And so you can create different presets with different parameters and that will generate designs. There are configuration options that you can generally look at depending on the typology you're working with. So that's test fit today and test fit of tomorrow and in the future is definitely looking at how we can optimize for generative design options and uh, what's the best way forward. We have some amazing engineers looking at this right now and we're really excited about what will be coming out. We've got a question about error messages in TestFit, and I'm going to throw this one to Laura since you help our customers and, and support them. When making site plans, sometimes I see an error message, but there's no explanation of the issue. Is there a way to see what those errors are and a log to manage these? Sure. So there is a tab, an error tab, at the um, just below the Canvas viewing area. So uh, likely an error might pop up there, and there's an explanation there. Uh, sometimes an error might be that the uh, the preset that's assigned to a site, uh, the parameters might be too large uh, for that because they're default parameters. So you might have to go into those properties and then uh, reduce those so uh, the solve can, can occur with uh, reduced parameters. That's a great point. Actually, when I'm showing test fit to new people, I show them a warehouse that doesn't fit. And then we change the minimum docks, the minimum bays, and the warehouse fits as kind of a part of understanding how those configurators come out of the box and how there's actually a lot of room to customize it. In fact, when you open up a customer's test fit, there's quite a lot of customization that they've put into the platform. Stan, you've got quite a lot of customization and presets in, in your test fit. Can you talk about some of the pieces that you've built, sets of roads, unit families, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of power in the presets where you take what TestFit has given you and add your own layers to it, save them as different databases. They can be different road databases, unit databases, even buildings. And then you can implement that in your designs later on. But I want to quickly mention about, you know, TestFit is, isn't perfect. There's still going to be things that need to be worked out. And you that's why you get some of those error messages for whatever reason. And we have one of the best customer success teams I've ever seen, not in just the industry, but just in SaaS in general. And going to, to support at testfit.io, sending your emails there. We also have a submit feedback in the top left of TestFit. If you ever run into those errors, send that directly to engineering and we'll, we'll get on it very quickly. So uh, don't be bashful to talk to us about any issues that come up with TestFit. We really wanna help you out and make this one of the most valuable platforms you've ever used. We've got a couple of questions about parking. We've got great functionality in parking, also in parking garages. Uh, you know, Florida, they're not doing underground parking garages, but up in Montreal, it's the way of business. So can you take a, talk a little bit about how underground parking works and then perhaps columns in general for parking? Sure. So uh, we have with uh, the high density configurator, we've got structured parking um, and then we also have it tied to multifamily, so uh, multiple layers are composing a, a preset. And parking can go underground, and it is counted. So structured parking that maybe is a couple of levels of um, below grade and a couple above will be counted. Uh, so you can adjust it as the user and define how many levels. Um, you can define where the ramp is, what what uh, degree the slope of the ramp is, and then you can also turn on uh, columns and adjust the spacing so uh, it can be shy of the uh, the end of the parking space. So you do have control over that. Great. We had a we had a discussion between the three of us about some of the concerns that an architect or the industry might have about. AI. Uh, Laura, you were recently chatting with some other industry peers about this conversation. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what are some concerns? What are challenges? On a positive note, what are opportunities that developers and architects are seeing in some of these digital tools, especially AI? 
Sure. So at the American Institute of Architects conference this year, this was a very hot topic. Uh, so uh, well, uh, lots of seminars focused on the concerns, benefits, and implementation strategies for AI. So some of the AI concerns or the kind of the fear factor uh, that were echoed in multiple seminars were uh, authorship, so intellectual property, uh, security, quality, and bias of data, liability, and then also turning brains off. So that was really geared to junior staff developing those fundamental uh, tools uh, as they pursue licensure. And then if we if we pivot and we think of uh, AI as a tool, so like the Iron Man suit uh, that will bolster our abilities, the opportunities uh, include access to more data, more data faster, uh, greater collaboration against uh, for internal and external teams, uh, efficiencies in time and money, and, and integration of software, upskilling staff, and for architects, really redirecting focus back to uh, the, their expertise as a professional service versus focusing on the deliverables. And one, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just one, one comment that really stood out to me in one of the seminars was uh, the chief architect of the GSA, so the General Services Administration. Uh, GSA has said they're all in when it comes to AI. And uh, uh, he stated that he would actually prioritize responses uh, to RFPs that utilized AI due to the saved efficiencies in, in time and money. And uh, he foresaw that it's not required now, but likely in the future, that a citation of the particular AI platform or, or application used might be required. So it uh, really shows that the quality and reputation of that AI platform matters in winning projects, uh, especially when the clients are prioritizing those proposals that utilize AI because of scaled efficiencies. So that was a very powerful statement that came up at that seminar. I used to do business development for SWA Group's Dallas studio, and I remember we'd be in these interviews as designers, and they'd always go and say, you know, what makes your process different? And we talk about design excellence, but I saw during my career the transition from the BIM leader was just the person that got Revit installed to digital practice leaders being a significant part of the value proposition and that process story that designers tell about how they make an impact. And so it's not surprising to me to hear you bring up these comments about the GSA because I think clients do want designers to bring process innovation, mm -hmm. not just design innovation. And, and change can be scary. So I think that's where we uh, help with that implementation process. When we have new customers, we've got uh, implementation, we've got training, we've got knowledge-based resources, and now we have a accelerator, which offers courses to kind of get ramped up in, in learning a uh, test fit site solver. Yeah, yeah. Change, change can be daunting for any organization, especially with organizations like developers or architects that have uh, 30 years of legacy processes. And so it's just hard to jump on some of these. And so we've helped hundreds of companies do that. And so, you know, if you have questions about that, that's why we're here to help you through that process and make it a lot easier and more efficient for you. We've got an interesting question about adding typologies. Is there a way to create one's own library of typologies and save it? I've got a personal story. Uh, I worked with a client and they design water parks. Now, if you've been in test fit, there's no water park pump building that's pre-built. But what they did is they took some of their past projects and using the background image in test fit, they were able to bring those in recreate some of these custom typologies. So yes, Mark, that, that's a huge part of what folks are doing in test fit. Uh, Laura, that's a part of what you do during some of the onboarding I'd expect is create some of these typical typologies that the customers are using. Absolutely. We definitely uh, go through strategies on how to create those presets or, or prototypes that they can uh, create that library and then utilize on multiple sites and for multiple deals. Uh, and we we work to uh, customize those geared specifically to that customer and, and their prototypes or presets. So, And it's a, a teach a man to fish model where we also are giving you the ability to create these typologies on your own. You don't necessarily need to be in our inbox every time you want uh, want new ones. 
We've got a handful of questions, and I can tell that there are some folks that want to get a deep dive. Good news. You can go to our website. You can connect with the team. They're happy to give a personalized demo and really walk through all the features live with you. In fact, you might even get to see Stan in one of those situations. Um, we've got an interesting question here. Is it possible to understand the assumptions which TestFit considers when creating these options, such as type of structure, efficiency ratios, which could have an impact on some areas as it tabulates? A simple hover function could, you, could be really helpful. P speaking for someone like myself, we may not completely understand all the terminology here. Uh, Stan, can you talk a little bit about uh, yield on cost and the way that that drives the optimizations? And then also the hover functionality that we do have and the way that that works. Well, yeah, understanding the, the assumptions created in, in the options. So we don't have a direct way of showing that automatically. And that is something that you learn as you get through TestFit. We do have some knowledge base articles that help you understand some of that stuff. So uh, that's very useful on our website. And to, you know, talk about what was the other thing that you were talking about? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yield on cost and the way that that drives the options. Um, so it it's one of those parameters that you can go ahead and set and then see how the actual building is going to adjust uh, based on some of those parameters. We have several of those uh, within our zoning profile that you can go ahead and adjust and um, it'll give you metrics on the side in your tabulation to show you if you're meeting them or not. Some of them automatically adjust and some of them you have to adjust the model yourself. But TestFit is trying to balance that um, algorithm doing the work and you as the designer with the knowledge and understanding what changes you have to make to make that work. So we're always trying to find that right balance. And it's a, a constant improvement process that we go through. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're we're coming towards the end of some of the questions here. So if you've got a, a question that you really want answered, please uh, go ahead and get it in. We've got a question about cost here I can answer quickly. Uh, someday, perhaps, TestFit will have cost data for Montreal and Vancouver and Miami and everywhere from here to Bahrain. We don't today. Today, you provide all the cost data. But I think that's a better scenario because you don't care what Jack O'Neill's land costs are. What are you going to pay for the land? You don't care what Stan's vacancy rate is. What's your vacancy rate going to be? And so those pro formas you create... But our customers often create those pro formas and then apply them site after site after site. They take that financial approach and the site approach and bring them together via test fit. Uh, so costs aren't regionalized. They're not in the in the platform. Wrapping up, uh, I, I think that one of the things that I find when Stan and I are strategizing with teams is that if they have a story where they say, if this was different, our business could do this. Uh, that's a really powerful place for TestFit to start bringing solutions to your team. Right now, we have a Monday morning meeting, and we make tweaks and changes to the program, and then our design team has to take that away, study, count, represent that graphically, and we come back the next Monday. That's a week that you're not moving on a deal. TestFit's got an opportunity to cut that down. Maybe your architect live in the meeting can run through those iterations with the development team, and you're able to make a decision in that moment. A lot of the architects, Laura, like you mentioned, are doing these for marketing. They're doing these to win business. If, as an architect, you can, for lower cost to yourself, provide more options to your developer, that makes you a more powerful asset, a more powerful collaborator. And, and ultimately, that's going to result in not just more business from that client, but more business from other clients as well. Um, Laura, Stan, I'm, I'm going to give each of you a chance for a couple of final thoughts here. Uh, I also will let everyone know, I'm going to drop this in the chat. You are going to have the opportunity to try TestFit yourself. This is a link to create a trial of TestFit. You can use this link. You can also go to our website and talk to chat. Chad will give you the option to talk to sales or support. You want to talk to sales? You can set up a personalized demo where we'll walk through all the features you want to see. Um, Stan, let me go to you first for a couple of closing thoughts. Um, I just, you know, it's it's amazing how much can change in a few years. Like when I first looked at TestFit, it was like, oh my gosh, 
what is this thing? And now it, it's just been a couple of years since AI has gotten into the zeitgeist and everybody understands that it is a powerful force and it's not a magic button, but it is definitely an accelerator. And it's really, really amazing to be a part of this process and with a company that's forefront in this. So happy to be here and happy to help other companies uh, find their way in that architecture development process. We're happy to have you alongside us. And like I said, you can spend some time uh, with Stan the Man in person uh, via our demos. Uh, Laura, a couple of closing thoughts from you. Sure, sure. I think it's just uh, important to, to look at AI and, and test it as a, a tool, you know, a powerful tool. I see one of the comments and, uh, you know, architects might want to design around experience and views, and that's very important. But with a tool and more options, uh, the architect can analyze, evaluate, select the options that make sense and incorporate, you know, orientation on the site, uh, experiential quotient. Uh, so the architect is very much still in control of this uh, process and working alongside with the developer as well. So it's a, a powerful tool. I'm excited to be here at TestFit and also to help our customers embrace, uh, adopt and adapt their pro uh, feasibility processes uh, to, to benefit using TestFit. Uh, test so. well, we're so happy to have you here. You know, ultimately speed wins. Speed wins in technology, speed wins in college football. It wins in architecture, engineering, construction and commercial real estate. We're talking about speed because you know it matters. It matters how quickly you get a response to your client. It matters how quickly you're able to make an offer on a piece of property. It matters how quickly you can give someone a story and a vision for what they can put on a piece of property. Test fits a tool for speed. Speed's a tool to win. If you want to learn more about how to put test fit to work to give yourself a competitive edge, uh, I'm here to help. You can find me. Thank you, Stan, Laura, for being here. Thanks to all the attendees. Uh, we're happy to answer questions offline. You can find all of us on LinkedIn. Uh, thanks for your time. It's been a great time today at TestFit Now.